but there came a point after so many years i felt a little bit trapped and i wasn't satisfied with what i was doing i wasn't happy with what i was doing i didn't feel like i was where i was supposed to be kelsey did you find a golf ball huh that's really not the greatest idea for you to play fetch with but here ready you missed hey there you go no nope, she didn't see it my fault What's up guys, it's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and uh, as you can see, we've got the skid steer loaded up with the uh, Ironcraft Tree Reaper, like my favorite implement of all time. <sighs> I'm going to do something a little bit different today. We are not working on my neighbor's place. Actually, I spent about three hours this morning working over there, but I, uh, I get asked frequently, what would you do if YouTube fell apart? What would you do if YouTube or social media or Facebook, all that went away and you couldn't make money online? Well... I think this is what I would do. So today, I'm gonna to take you guys on a little adventure. I've got a job that I uh, promised I would do several months ago. Uh, just haven't been able to get there for uh, multiple reasons. So we've got a few hours this afternoon. I think it shouldn't take, I don't think it should take too long, maybe three hour, three hours, something like that. Uh, so basically, the uh, pastor that married DJ and I, I grew up with his kids and we were, so in the church that we are in now, but he has since moved on and taken uh, some jobs at the national level within the Free Will Baptist Association. But anyways, he has moved on to Nashville, but they're thinking about moving back and retiring back to our area, and they own a little bit of land. And he made a, I made a post on Facebook a while back and said, I really need some help cleaning up some property. And uh, he was going to be out there with a chainsaw and axes and all that stuff. And I was like, uh... <laughs> I've got a much better option. So we went and looked at it, and uh, it's nothing extreme, nothing huge, but just one of those jobs that I could go do, make a few hundred bucks, you know, for hire with uh, a machine like this. So take you guys along. I'm not going to bore you with the whole process, but uh, before I go, I want to go check on our baby donkey and our mama Fiona because, uh, well, we can. And DJ still has not named, she has not officially named. Our little baby donkey. What's up, Charlie? How are you and Farrah doing? Hmm? Brandon out there just doing his thing. He's been uh, making a lot of commotion at night. That guy brays all night long. I don't know if he's like a booger barker, you know, like a dog that barks at everything that goes bump in the night, or if uh, that's just when Brandon likes to do his business. Which one is it, Farrah? Hmm? Okay, let's go check on our baby. Hey, Fiona. How are y'all doing today? Hmm? What's going on? I can't believe mom hasn't named your baby yet. Isn't that strange? Hmm? Hey, little girly. How are you? Hmm? She's doing good. We uh, still only have one baby. Felicia has not had hers yet. Not any sign of having a baby. But uh, she is, for those of you that saw the video, she is doing a lot better. She's able to walk and get around on that back leg without any problems at all. So they're all, uh, all doing well. Huh, Fiona? I have no idea what DJ's going to name this baby. All right. It's hot out here. Do you guys know that? It's warm today. Kelsey, what you doing? Hmm? Just eating rocks? Are you eating rocks? Huh? Are you eating rocks? All right, Kelsey. You're going to have to stay in here, okay? Nobody's home, and I've got to go to work for a few hours, so you stay here, all right? When we're gone for several hours, we keep Kelsey in one of the stalls because, well, I just don't feel safe leaving her turned out outside 
uh, that little GSP, <laughs> oh, she might take off and never come back. She'd probably get lost. That is one fireball of energy. Uh, the, the other night, I filmed a quick little video, posted it on Facebook, just to show you guys how much energy that little dog has. And a lot of folks have been asking if we were going to send uh, Kelsey to a, uh, a dog trainer like we said we were going to when we got her. And that is planned. Uh, we found an obedience trainer. Guy's like former military, spent like 17 years in the military training dogs. Seems like a pretty legit dog trainer. And uh, it's just obedience school. It's not, you know, she's not, not actually going to be a bird dog. We're not sending her. I've got to get out here pretty quick or she's going to keep doing that. I got to lock the other dogs in the house. But anyways... Uh, we will be sending her, but we're waiting until she's six months old because he suggested not to do anything before six months because their brain's not really fully developed yet. random observation from Daniel out driving around <laughs> can you tell which property owner on which side of the road takes care of their property this place very well maintained you can see they did a control burn out through there and there's a lot of dead and dying cedar trees out across that place look see all the brown cedar trees the place looks nice and clean well taken care of and the person across the road has never touched their property. <laughs> don't maintain their fence lines. Don't maintain the cedar and the brush. But look at this. Check this out. Come over the hill. Somebody built them a nice pond. It might have been there for a while, but look how pretty that is. Awesome. Looks good. Somebody, you're doing a good job, whoever you are. Somebody over here? Eh, eh, eh. Well, you own the land and that's about, that's about it, I guess. So here's what we're going to be doing. This is a corner of their property. They've got an easement from their neighbor. You can see where my truck's parked back there. They're going to have to do something with their pecan trees here because they only have a certain uh, amount of room. So there's a fence over there. They own so many feet off of that fence right there. So they're gonna have to make a driveway come all the way in through here, which I'm not taking out the pecan trees. That's that's on them at a later date. They're not ready to move back here, but they wanna get their place cleaned up. So you might be able to see the T-post down through there as their uh, right away back to the property. So they don't own this, but you can tell exactly where their boundary is because, well, the neighbor, has mowed their place the last you know at least once over the last couple of years all standing dead grass really and then here's what their property looks like and as you can see it's covered in young small eastern red cedar and just a lot of brush and they really hopefully plan to build a house back here i don't know maybe in a couple of years or so but they just don't want to lose everything 
that they've got here so anyways that's why we're here with the uh, New Holland skid steer Ironcraft tree reaper I didn't see any reason to bring the uh, the big disc mulcher because most all of this is small stuff and we're just gonna mow it down like a lawnmower Wow, what a difference <laughs> just a few hours can make, right? <laughs> uh, I know this wasn't a huge project, but man, feels good. It looks good. 
this is 10 times better than what it was. You couldn't hardly walk through this stuff. And uh, I think, like I said, they're eventually wanting to build a house here. And if, if we'd have just let this go, it may be, it may be another two or three years before they're ready to build their home here. But they're wanting to put it out here on the back edge of this field. And they're gonna have to do some work. They're gonna have to get a bulldozer in here and do some work. But if they'd have just let this go for another few years, it would have been completely lost and would have really required a bulldozer to come in and even clean up what used to be an open field just, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago, maybe less. So we cleaned up everything that they asked us to clean up. There's the fence row. Now they're gonna have to come in and build their road, do all that stuff. Got everything in pretty good shape. There's a down tree right there. I don't have a grapple here or I just haul that off and stuff it in the timber for them. But as you can see, it uh, looks totally different. On a pile of steel and trash and metal back there. I kind of had to avoid that little thicket back there, but man, looks a lot better, doesn't it? You know, I said that this, uh, this whole situation here, if social media fell apart, I could go to work full time doing this stuff. And, and that's true. It really is. I, I love running this equipment and I feel very blessed that I can come out here and do things like this. And, you know, I, I can remember back not too many years ago, guys, honestly, I, I left my career as a state trooper in July of 2020. We're coming up on four years four years of being self-employed owning my own business basically uh, i know content creation social media is a little bit different but it is a, a business but this right here today this is a side hustle i i bid this job out like somebody's looking for a job to be done i offered came and looked at it gave a bid so that i could do it for it's a good friend of mine and you know I, it's somebody that that i really respect and looked up look up to this could have been a big project that could go a lot farther, but for what they wanted done, I said I could do it for $75 an hour. And, you know, we're three or four or five hours in. I think I'll probably start my time from when I when I left the house, not loading and prepping equipment and all that, but from when I left my house until I load this thing and pull out, not when I get home probably. But anyways, probably have four or five hours total in it. And that, that would be a good day's work. You know, it's a side hustle today. And I talked about that for years when I was when I had a full time career, because you know, I used to mow lawns and I used to grow vegetables and do all kinds of things to to help support my family. But more important than that, being a state trooper was a good job. Don't get me wrong; it's a great career. But there came a point after so many years, I felt a little bit trapped, and I wasn't satisfied with what I was doing. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I didn't feel like I was where I was supposed to be. And I had all these side hustles and all this other stuff and social media just happened to be the avenue that was able to help me get out of that. But I want I want you guys to understand, a lot of people are unhappy in their career, unhappy with their work, unhappy with their life, and it doesn't have to be permanent. You can make a change, you can change your path. And I totally 100% believe that that God led me down a different path because I wasn't where I was supposed to be in law enforcement. Nothing against it, nothing against the job, nothing against the people I worked with. It just wasn't a lifetime career for me. And I don't know what that looks like, but I do know one thing. After four years, almost four full years of being self-employed, I can't imagine going back and working for somebody else, working for the government, working for the state. And if I needed to take off, have and would have to send in a leave request to my supervisor to take off to go watch one of my kids ball games or you know to take off to go fishing on a fishing trip or something whatever it was you know i answer to me now and i'm able to spend my time with my family on my own schedule and i love it i'm blessed but don't don't overlook those side hustles mine used to be a lawnmower on a you know little cheap trailer and doing yards in town for little old ladies and we've upgraded a little bit over the years but still still hustling still getting out here and working and there's just something about about being a man and and work something about getting out here putting your nose to the grinding wheel and getting something done this 
project today, yes, I can see progress. It, it, being a state trooper, it was hard to see progress, but you still get out there and you grind. And there's just something satisfying for for men and for women. Don't, not just women, but for men, I can speak for. I can't speak for women because I'm not one. I'm not a they, them. I'm a he, him. <laughs> Anyways, I I just think there's something to be said about a good hard day's work. It just makes you feel good at the end of the day. I don't know. Well, I'm going to load this up, head back to the house, do my chores, and who knows what all else the day brings. Well, y'all, made it home. <laughs> Everyone here is doing good. Everyone uh, has been fed. <laughs> Except these girls. They didn't get any grain today. We're, we're not getting much grain while there's a lot of green grass. So today's a, a no grain day. And they're jealous because Charlie gets feed and they don't. You poor things. Yeah. Fairy, you sure are mean. You know that? Charlie, have a good day, buddy. Is it all good? Hey, Brandon. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch my toes, watch my toes. There's Brandon. What's up, buddy? Hmm. You been aggravating any girls lately? Hmm. <laughs> I think the girls are aggravating you, aren't they? Yeah, they are aggravating little girls. I know that. Might as well walk and talk, right? So, uh, yesterday evening, <clears throat> after supper, well, I don't know, probably about 7 o'clock, Houston and I went back down to uh, the lake where we were fishing a couple videos back and went out on the dock there where our, our buddy's little boat is and the dock and slips and all that first cast both of us catch a crappie and i was like oh man houston said you better start videoing and i thought eh, not today i said let's just fish we don't ever just fish we always video everything and he said are you sure i was like oh yeah i'm just gonna i don't i didn't really have any intentions on on video in our fishing adventure and uh we sit there on that dock and caught three or four or five crappie and the sand bass started biting and i was like man this is going to be good. And uh, our buddy Clayton came down and he said, hey, let's hop in the boat and go across. Just not across the lake, just across the, the little cove there. He said, I got a couple of crappie holes over here that are usually pretty good. And we ended up staying like two hours. It was after dark before we quit fishing. And uh, I think Houston probably caught more fish than Clayton and I combined. Hey, Phoebe, don't you bite me on the bottom. Anyways, Houston probably caught way more fish than Clayton and I did combined. We ended up cleaning, filleting. Hey, hey. You stay back. You stay back. Bree, don't you kick me. Anyways, we ended up filleting 17 keeper size crappie. They have to be over 10 inches on that lake. So that's not counting all the small ones we threw back. But the sand bass, I bet you we caught somewhere between 50 and 75 sand bass. We just threw all them back. We weren't even keeping sand bass. We were just keeping the crappie. And uh, it was unreal at how many fish we caught. And like I said, we, we never just go fishing hardly. I mean, every once in a while we'll run over to the pond and not video. But almost all of our fishing stuff is on video. And uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. We had a great time just hanging out, the three of us on that little boat. We took Kelsey with us. Uh, that was interesting. Kelsey went on her first uh, boating adventure. Huh, Kelsey? Did you have fun? Did you have fun? Huh? Huh? Did you have fun? I think she had fun. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Miss Kiki thing over there. <laughs> Bree. It's just Kelsey. She won't bother you, okay? 
anyways we had a great time so much fun and uh, so many fish were caught but when we were on the dock there were just sand bass just schooling all under the dock and i told houston we need to we need to go get us some minnows because they wouldn't bite on the dock we need to go get about three or four dozen minnows and we'll have a whole stringer full of sand bass so maybe we'll do that soon alicia how's the leg you look much 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 better yeah kelsey don't be scaring felicia why are you hanging out down here in just the dirt spot you got all this pretty green pasture hmm when are you gonna have this baby could you tell me it would really help if you could be like tuesday tuesday if you were a horse, you'd kind of sound like a horse. But you're not a horse, are ya? You a donkey. Yeah. So, her leg was really tender there for a couple days. Really just one day. The second day, she was putting a lot more weight on it. I think it's still maybe a little bit sore, but nothing bad. Felicia's feeling good. Bree, don't you bite me. Don't you bite me. You have turned into quite the little turd. You're gonna fit in really well. Oh, that's Brandon. With mom's triplets. Farah, don't push too hard now. <laughs> that's your daddy, Bree. Did you know that? You guys look a lot alike. You got the same markings under your eyes. Yep. You look like your daddy. And you don't even know it. It's pretty cool though, look at you. Those dark spots under their eyes, hers are just a little bit lighter, but they have the same thing going on. So, anyways, that's my day. No kicking. No kicking, okay? Bree kicked mom in the hand the other day, my wife. Kicked her right in the wrist. Hey, watch where you're pointing those things. Those hurt. <laughs> so anyways i guess that's gonna wrap it up for me today i think i'm gonna hop on the buggy ride around a little bit and let kelsey burn some energy take houston up maybe he'll go throw throw a fishing rod in the pond or something i don't know <laughs> where are you going kelsey but anyways beautiful day amazing day got a lot done got a little paid work done um i mean second career another career I mean, I don't know. Probably not. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can continue doing what we're doing for several more years and this keeps on plugging right along. But I will say, working for yourself is a whole different world and I'm thankful every day for little donkey butts. <laughs> I'm thankful every day for uh, what I get to do and uh, I don't know. It's a good life. I love it. So much better than than working for the state and having to ask somebody if I can take off to uh, take a donkey to the vet. Huh. Anyways, guys, remember, do something today to make somebody smile because you never know. It just might change the world. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.